beautiful people. Welcome back to the Empowering Her podcast. I'm Melody Pormorati, and I have another episode for you this morning. Hopefully, my voice is going to cooperate. Um, I have been looking forward to recording this episode since last week, where we had a meeting with our Girl Life coaches, and whenever we have these meetings, it's just like such an inspiring group of women. We get down to talking about the stuff that really matters because we're close with each other. We talk about um, our businesses, of course, but we're also really talking about our lives. We're talking about themes that keep coming up. We're talking about um, uh, our businesses and why they are working, why they're not working. Like, what is it that keeps us stuck? Um, and something really interesting came up. And one of our amazing, beautiful coaches was talking about how she just hasn't been able to get her girls' empowerment movement off the ground. And without getting into too many details, we really got down to the nitty gritty of it is like, they're like, we can't do something once, twice, or even three times and then be okay with the results because greatness takes time and anything that we want to do, be, create in our world requires excellence. It requires reps. Like when we go to the gym, we don't build muscle after just going once, twice, or three times, right? We have to continuously go. We have to build that muscle and we have to be patient with ourselves. We have to be patient with um, the powers that be, right? So when we are putting something out there in the world, it takes a lot of time to build that momentum. In the case of a girl life coach, it takes time for people to know you as a trusted authority in your community. In the girls empowerment world, you need to put out an, enough content and you need to show your face enough for people to get to know what you're all about, to know what you stand for, to know what breaks your heart, to know what um, your big why is. So today's episode, I'm calling How Badly Do You Want It? So whether it's a business idea that you have, whether it's um, a relationship that you're trying to create, whether it's getting more healthy and fit, how badly do you really want it? And that is the question we have to ask ourselves because the fact of the matter is if we want something badly enough, we will do everything we need to do to bring it into our world, to manifest it. And now I'm talking about doing your part, right? So when we, you've heard me say very often that we co-create. So it's like, what's your part to do? you go first. What are the necessary steps that you have to take to bring your dream, to bring that thing that you're imagining into the world? What is it going to take to bring your health up to the level that you want it at? What are the steps you need to take? We can all, you know, we've all watched movies like The Secret where we talk about imagining and visualizing the outcome. But the one thing that sometimes this world of the secret misses is the action steps, is the aligned and inspired action that we need to take to make that thing a reality. So if you're talking about getting healthy, you know, you're going to be talking about um, your mental health, right? Like what are you consuming? You want to feel good all the time, but you still are, are scrolling through social media incessantly and obsessively. Um, my hand is up because I do this. Like I talk about my mental health and I'm like, you know, I, I need, I need to, to consume less media, especially like put mental health aside also just for my business. Right. I want to create more than I consume when we consume more than we create. It messes with our own unique voice. So how badly do I really want to put that social media away if I want mental health? And I was reading this really fascinating stat recently that said something along the lines of the amount of content that we consume from the morning when we wake up to the nighttime when we go to bed is the equivalent of 
what a person a hundred years ago would consume in their entire life. I want you to really think about that. So all of the images that are coming at us, all of the information, whether it's about politics or the ensuing war in the Middle East or, um, you know, whatever it is, like all of that content or ways to grow, make ourselves feel better, do better, create more, all of that, there's more coming at us today in one day than someone who lived a hundred years ago. It's a lifetime. We're comparing a lifetime to a day. So I want you to just take that into consideration when you think of how much you're consuming. So when I say I want to feel better, well, one of the first things I could do is cut my um, the amount of time I spend on my phone. I could set a timer. I could um, just put the phone in a different room. There's so many different things we could do, but how badly do I really want it? Clearly not badly enough, right? Because I haven't taken those steps. If we're talking about getting healthy, how badly do we want it? Are we looking at what we're consuming in terms of food, right? Are we looking at how often we step into a gym or decide to practice yoga or mindfulness? These are all things that we have to consider. And the fact of the matter is, if we're not stepping into those things and taking action on those things, we obviously don't want it badly enough. So as we talk about this idea of how badly do we want it, I want you to tap into the power of your excuses. Um, Excuses are simply a form of self-sabotage. They are. We use them to protect ourselves from the discomfort of failure, but ultimately we're not protecting ourselves at all because if we're not failing, then we're not trying. If we're not failing, we're not, we're not putting in the reps, right? Um, I would love for you to fail today. I would love for you to fail 10 times today. That is evidence to me that you are trying, that you are going out there and, and giving yourself a chance, giving a shot to whatever it is that you want. So if we're talking about getting healthy, I want you to fail today at getting healthy because perhaps the way that you're deciding to move on getting healthy for you is not your way. And by doing that thing that didn't work out for you, you have more evidence of what might actually work. And you are putting in the willingness to do something different because you're worth it, right? So common excuses that we all use for the things that we want, time, resources, fear of judgment, imposter syndrome, not feeling like we've got all of our eggs in a eggs in a row no that's that's not it i'm not getting the I'm not getting the expression right ducks it's ducks we're not getting all our ducks in a row um recently i was talking to both of my daughters and they're both like my god we really miss music and performing like specifically performing cuz they can do you know they can practice their music on their own but they're like we miss getting up on a stage and sharing our love for music, I'm like, okay, like there are a million and one ways you could get back on stage, but how badly do you want it? Like, are you going to do the work? Are you going to reach out to networks and school of musicians? Are you going to start a music club? Are you going to put a feeler out on your floor? Like, what are you going to do? How badly do you want it? And when the excuses come up to me, it's just like, okay, like she doesn't want it badly enough. Right? So it's like, Excuses are the lies we tell ourselves to avoid facing the truth. They keep us safe, like, but not really. They keep us, we we have the perception of being safe, but they also keep us stagnant. And if we're really being honest, our excuses are keeping us small. So explore that for yourself. Ask yourself what one thing is that you've really been wanting to do, to be, to create, and ask yourself, Am I perhaps self-sabotaging by making excuse after excuse after excuse? Um, A really great book on this. I think it's called Excuses Be Gone by Wayne Dyer. Uh, If you feel like you are dwelling on your excuses and just not making any forward movement, give give it a call. Give it a try. All right. Another thing I want us all to explore together is upper limits. 
So Gay Hendricks has a concept called the upper limit problem from the book, The Big Leap. And the upper limit is a hidden barrier we place on ourselves when things are going well, causing us to sabotage our pro progress. So it's like, if you're, if you're experiencing your upper limit, a sign might be procrastination, anxiety, drama in relationships, self-doubt creeping in just as you're about to succeed. So it's this crazy thing that we humans do to ourselves that like, we're on a path, we're doing the reps, we're, we're failing forward. And all of a sudden we just do something so irrational that sabotages us, that stunts our growth. I'm sure you can think of ways that this might happen in your life. Um, I'm like debating whether I should share a personal example. All right, I'm going to share it. So like my husband and I, thankfully, we have a very strong relationship. And as the girls went off to school, we were like just so excited for the time we were spending together and we were having the best time. And I'm fully aware and take ownership of having done this without telling you what I did. I brought a new variable into the equation of our relationship that was causing an upper limit. Like I was creating problems where perhaps problem, like this thing was important to me, but like so quickly after the girls left and so quickly after we were, <clears throat> excuse me, we were like reliving our, our honeymoon years, right? Like back to the two of us and things were going so well. And I brought this new variable in causing me to self-sabotage and to in some way sabotage the relationship. Now, of course, we've worked through it and it's be we've become stronger as a result of it. But how cool is it? Then I, that I could identify that and take ownership of the fact that I brought this new variable, this new idea, this new like problem from a hundred years ago into the mix, because it's like, how good can you handle it, Melody? Or how good can you handle it, beautiful listener? Like sometimes we have a really hard time just basking in the glory of what we've created and we feel like things should be hard. And instead of flowing downstream, we are swimming frantically upstream. And it's like life is not meant to work that way. We're supposed to feel good. That is our birthright. So we need to break through those upper limits. We need to identify them as they're coming up, notice them for what they are, give them the, the time, the attention that they want and are asking of us, but also really ration, rationalize them. Talk to them. Why are you here? Why are you showing up for me? Right. Um, so the only thing that is standing between you and everything you've ever wanted is the story that you keep telling yourself. Upper limits aren't real, right? They're not real barriers. They are 100% self imposed. So just something to consider. Um, awareness helps us through this, calling out upper limits and excuses for what they are reframing. So shifting from I can't because to how can I make this ha happen? And I encourage you to grab yourself an accountability partner, a friend, um, a community, someone, somewhere, somehow find that accountability. In our program, we have something called a partner in shine where it's like, okay, you're committing to becoming a girl's empowerment coach. That's awesome. But we want like we want to make this foolproof. We want to make sure that you succeed. So we set you up with a partner in shine, accountability partner, who's going to hold that space for you to do all the things that you say you want to do that we know you want to do. But sometimes our excuses get bigger than our ability to take that inspired and aligned action. Now, something else for us to explore when we're talking about how badly do you want it is the comfort zone. So sometimes we are like, I'm comfortable now. Like, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I don't want to um, put myself out there because I'm comfortable. But sometimes the role of the comfort zone, it's like where dreams literally go to die <laughs> and we never challenge ourselves. So it's like fear. It's really that fear of even like, 
If you're stepping a millimeter out of your comfort zone, I want you to do something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable every day because this is how we grow. So the only thing that's more powerful than fear is desire. When you want something badly enough, you can al allow your fear to take a back seat. So that thing, that thing that I know you've been thinking about since the start of this episode, um, I want you to really, really consider it and allow it to perhaps take a back seat as you take small steps in the direction of your goal. Okay. Um, comfortable, comfortable, uncomfortable action, right? Something that's so small, that's making you a little uncomfortable, but is comfortable enough that you're willing to actually make the moves. Um, so I hope that this episode has served you. I hope that I'm giving you the little nudge that you need to do the thing that you know you want to do, however big, however small. I don't want you sitting here 10 years from now being like, oh my God, imagine what I could have accomplished if I took action 10 years ago. This time in your life is going to go by anyway. So what are you going to fill your moments in? What are you willing to take some action on right now? Um, perhaps the greatest action you can take, like I, I recognize very much that each of us here are very different, right? So like perhaps you're a person who never takes action, right? Who You're like, you're just constantly in that comfort zone and you're like, I'm just, I'm not going to do the thing. I, you know, so I'm kind of talking to you, but if you're that person who takes on a million and one tasks throughout the day, who has been working your ass off since you were like 14 years old, who has never really known how to take a break, the best discomfort, the most uncomfortable action you could take is to actually take a break, is to take a rest. So like as we we go through any of these episodes, you have to know thyself. You have to know like which, like what is the aligned action that I'm here to take. And sometimes action means doing something that you've never done before. For those of us who are like constantly on the move and go, 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 I'm not that person anymore. I have really learned that sometimes the greatest action I can take is to take a pause. That's where I'm at, right? So like know thyself and know where do you fall on this spectrum of action, is it that you need to take more action or is the greatest action you could take the action of rest, the action of rejuvenation and relaxation because you're always on the move? So um, just kind of like a, a little disclaimer uh, that I should have given at the beginning of this episode, but hey, here it is now. So I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Empowering Her. Um, we've got something cool coming your way. I can't wait to share it. It's called the power play series where I bring some truly magnificent women from our girl life community to talk about all of the different workshops that we run, but like bringing them into real life and real world examples of how we embody them as women walking this earth. So you don't want to miss that. Make sure that you are following this podcast if you want to get notified every time we drop a new one, our Power Play series is starting very soon, and that is going to be followed up by an incredible five-day free training. So don't miss it. Follow along. And if you haven't left a review yet, knock, knock, where have you been? Um, if you enjoy this podcast, the greatest gift that you can give me and our future listeners is to leave a review. It's the simplest thing to do if you're listening on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, wherever you listen to just leave a review. Um, and I am thanking you in advance for that. And if you've already done that, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you so much. And I will talk to you again next week. Bye. If you love what you're hearing on the Empowering Her podcast, it would mean the world to me if you could leave a five-star review. And as a thank you, I would love to share a free audio with you called Claiming Your Enoughness Now. Simply share a screenshot of your review with me on Instagram at Girl Life Empowerment with one L, either in the DMs or in a story, and I will send the gift your way. 
Thank you so much for your listenership. I can't express how much it means to me. 